the jet lag is real or maybe I'm just really old <laughs> What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday with Ola 133 <laughs> 30, 33 Oh my god guys, holy sh**. It's been one week since Nam and I'm still jet lagged Man God <laughs> I highly recommend to you guys, don't get older Okay, it sucks ass Recovery from things just takes longer You know, sh a thing like jet lag is taking forever It sucks ass Oh shit, complaining Ola, oh how are you doing? Let's throw another guitar pick, I mean why not? Alright, ah Oh Alright Let's go, coffee And this thing about recovery too, like me and Luis, we, uh, we drank a little bit this past Saturday and you know, uh, not too much really, I had like two beers and two or three glasses of wine and then, you know, the, the Sunday was ruined It was ruined basically, it was uh, ruined <laughs> No, but it's just like, at this point it's just not worth it you know? Why do you drink? Because it's fun, it's a lot of fun to drink, okay? But also I try not to drink Not too often at least But it's awesome to be back home, uh, you know, going to Nam is awesome But it's a lot of work, you know, it's a lot of work So I like being at home And have a lot of work at home instead, it fits me better You know what, maybe because we're sitting here talking about Nam, Maybe I should talk a little bit about the, you know, my future projections of Nam And what it might be in the coming years uh, because obviously you know it's not completely back to normal after the pandemic this time Nam was in April it's usually in, usually in January okay a lot of people were speculating including me you know would Nam ever recover from the pandemic and all and I'm not sure if you saw my videos from Nam uh, you might have noticed that the, you know that it's smaller this year and you know it doesn't seem to be as many people as before and you're completely right it was about 50% smaller when it comes to you know brands being there and whatnot and, and I was even contemplating of not going until we got like a really good deal at the end so I mean we weren't supposed to go with solar guitars but eventually we did because we got a good deal going so we had a small little booth but other than that, I would just go as a YouTuber, you know, and do my YouTubing shit But with that said, I mean, it is very much smaller than it's ever been But uh, I can't really give my projection of what's gonna happen in the future I, I think the show will die off eventually, just like E3 for instance Did you see that the, uh, the gaming exhibition E3 got cancelled because, you know, it's just it's, it doesn't make any sense anymore I think the same thing will probably eventually happen to Nam, Unless if they, you know, do a really good job at making it a more of a public uh, exhibition Because obviously before it was for exhibitors and dealers and distributors and, you know, business people And then the last day was public Now it was all for the public the whole couple of days And I think that's the way to move forward for the show Because obviously everyone else can do meetings Throughout the year, through Zoom or whatever Also there weren't that many artists there because, you know, in April basically everyone is on tour So it was basically just, you know, public people, some brands and then YouTubers <laughs> being there And uh, so it was a little bit weird Absolutely, it wasn't as rock and roll as before But they are speculating that because there is a NAM happening in January Back to the regular spot next year that a lot of brands are holding off 
until that show. So maybe that's the reason why there were less brands this year. I think we won't really know for sure if NAM is gonna be okay or not until January next year when we see it, you know, back in the regular time slot to see if, you know, brands are gonna come back. I mean, Thunder's not going back and, you know, who knows if Gibson are coming back even and, you know, those are pretty heavy hitters. I mean, already at that point, it's already uh, half dead, you know, which is a shame. It's a fun event, man, and I had a lot of fun. But now we're going to head into the news. I'm going to touch up a little bit uh, in regards of a couple of NAM news that I didn't get to cover in my NAM videos, but we need to catch up a little bit, okay? So, you know, I'm back home. Ready to go, let's go. So Evertune finally unveiled their Evertune base bridge. The rock solid bridge system offers the ultimate in tuning stability and has been available for guitars for a decade. Now bassists are finally getting their turn. And I've actually had a couple of Evertune bass prototypes for a couple of years, I think like even five years back I had a prototype in here at the office uh, and I've been a part of the process and a little bit of, you know, back and forth with Evertune testing the prototypes of their bridge and the last prototype that I tested I think it was in it was probably this winter or something like that before December at least and throughout the prototype testing we've had it on two or three different solar bass guitars and the latest one I tested was uh, you know the, the latest rendition of the Evertune bridge I tested around Christmas maybe a little bit more uh, before Christmas and I was using it on a couple of swallows actually and it's really cool to uh, see how you know micro Microscopical, I can be about the tuning of the bass in this case using this uh, bridge. When you're working with really low tuned instruments, it's sometimes really hard to, you know, pinpoint that exact, like, okay, now it's in tune without it going a little bit, you know, uh, flat or going a little bit sharp. So with the average tune, you can really like go in and like nail in on that E, for instance, or a B. And with the prototypes that I've tested, it's been working really awesome. So it's nice to finally see that it's gonna be out in the public. Stay tuned for a solar bass, maybe. All right, Dean Guitars, they were also at NAMM. I just couldn't find them, man. Where were they? I couldn't find them. They announced a new Kerry King Custom Shop Overlord guitar. Dean's handmade USA model helps Kerry King to make his points. Take a look at this. Yes. <laughs> Remember the earwig guitar? Well, take the earwig guitar times 10 and you got this thing right here. And uh, yeah. What do you guys think? <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think. It has a Kaler bridge, EMG pickup and a Sustainiac in it and Pentagram. Oh shit, be careful. He's a Satanist. Uh, as inlays, that's actually pretty cool. I like the inlays. And uh, you have the ear wig headstock and this body shape that's sort of like an X, I guess. Ear wig X. And uh, I, it's a lot, you know? The price for all this high end hijinkery is six and a half grand, and that includes our case, which is probably a good thing because those spikes would be murder on your gig bag. You know, they've been announcing a couple of signature guitars with Kerry King, but we haven't heard anything yet about Kerry King's new project. I bet that we're gonna hear something really soon. That's what I hope, at least. All right, let me just... No, it didn't make it better. <laughs> Kiesel Guitars are now sponsoring a Flat Earther. That's actually a great clickbait title right there. No, okay, let's backtrack a little bit. Kiesel Guitars and Stephen Carpenter of Deftones are now working together. This doesn't mean that Steven has left ESP. This is a signature uh, guitar that happens alongside the ESP signature guitars. We've seen a lot of this with ESP, that they're letting their artists, you know, do other guitars as well. Just, you know, Kirk Hammond and James Hetfield. And I understand the deal with uh, Kirk Hammond and James Hetfield because obviously their names are so important. You don't want to risk losing them. So I understand if they want to do something else as well. Is ESP having a problem right now holding on to their artists that they have to let them kind of venture out a little bit, you know, by, by, but still keeping the contract? I don't know. I actually think it's kind of cool that ESP is letting their artists uh, venture out into other brands. I mean, why not, really? I mean, these are two completely different instruments. And I, it was just like with uh, Devin Townsend, for instance. He has a Framus guitar and a Kiesel guitar. So, the, you know, 
Hybrid endorsement. Okay, that's a that's a new word for me. I like that. San Francisco Bay Area Fresh Metal Pioneers Forbidden announced comeback. This is not a reunion. It's a rebirth. Forbidden's Craig Lacicero states about the band's rebirth. First off, I did not see this coming. Where Forbidden quietly disbanded the second time in 2012. I figured it was over. While I will always apply the never say never mantra to my life, Russ Anderson made it clear that we he was completely finished with touring. My wingman and main dude from the conception of Forbidden Evil, Russ, was my mentor and the guy who bought me beer when I was 15. I couldn't imagine Forbidden without him, so I had little hope of a future with Forbidden. Today Russ is happily retired and living the sober life. I have nothing but love for that and him. Everyone needs to respect his wishes like we do. So, okay, new singer. <laughs> so Forbidden in 2023 is gonna be Matt Camacho, Steve Smythe, okay? And Norman Skinner on vocals, Chris Contus on drums. Chris Contos, holy shit, what a legend. And I actually met both Craig and Chris Contos at NAMM and we talked for a little bit. They let me know about the rebirth of Forbidden and it got me extremely excited. Also, I was very excited to meet Chris Contos because he's one of my favorite drummers. Uh, one of those drummers that just, you know, when he plays, it feels like you know, the music is alive in a different... It's, it's hard to explain, I just really enjoy his drumming. So hearing that Chris is in Forbidden now gives me a lot of hope for this rebirth. So, awesome! Foo Fighters has released a single and uh, they're talking about a new album. And you might say, well, Foo Fighters is not metal. Well, they're actually sort of metal. I mean, Dave Grohl is cool as f So I haven't listened to the single, I'm gonna, right now. And let you know what I feel. This is obviously the first single and the first album since uh, Taylor passed away. I think there's something wrong. I don't think this is the, the music right here. Uh, <laughs> uh. This is how I'm feeling right now, by the way. This is me being jet lagged. It's just a bunch of noise in my head. So I guess I'm not listening to the new Foo Fighters singles, and you know, might as well. It, it will probably just demonetize this video, anyways. The news. So for Ola's unboxing thingamabob for the Sunday with Ola, I figured let me show you what I brought home from them. You know, brands that would give you shit and you know people that would give me stuff. So I have this beautiful bag right here and this beautiful bag. I, I figured we would just, you know, check it out. What did I get? Is there anything I'm gonna demo? You know the drill. Let me pull up like this. That's it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. How do you like this bag, by the way? It's a beautiful bag. All right, let's see. Okay, okay, okay. So as you can see, a fair bit of shit right here. Let me move that a little bit like that. Okay, where do we start? I think maybe we start... Uh, this? It's the Positive Grid Spark Go. This little asshole of a spark right there that you should be able to just put in your briefs, basically, and bring it to, you know, the beach or something. And I'm actually gonna bring this one home with me uh, to try out with the guitar I have at home, because I wanna sit at home and uh, practice a little bit. So I figured this would probably be a, a great thing to bring home. All right. Look at that. So there you go. Uh, what is this? You gotta stay positive with positive grid, man. All right, what is this? Oh, it's a little back cover, is it? Look at, oh, or it's a front cover. Okay, it's a front cover. So you can change this uh, front right here to a black one if you think black is cooler. But you know, I kind of like this a little bit. The very cool. Look at that little thing. I'm gonna see if I can try it out at home, and maybe I can give a little, you know, short demo of how it sounds. And Shit. Unfortunately, it's not waterproof. I figured it would be waterproof. It looks like something that would be waterproof and you brought it to the beach and be like, hey, sex on the beach. Okay. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this beautiful strap from Franklin. Uh, Franklin straps. Uh, made in the US of A. Oof. It smells great. It smells like cow. So beautiful leather strap right there. I like leather straps. You know, they're, they're, smell good. But then I also got this from, I don't remember what he was called, but some guy was walking around with these. And this is also a guitar strap, but look at this. Look at that. Can you see? What is this? There's like a Japanese dude on there. And it smells kind of funky too. Well, the cool thing about this brand is that they're making guitar straps out of old kimonos. You know, Japanese lady dresses. And it definitely smells like an old kimono, you know? So I thought it was pretty cool. Sondeli. I think it's Sondeli. Sondeli is the brand name. So very cool. Uh, smells a little funky. You know, like old Japanese lady. <laughs> I got a set of earplugs. Uh, minuendo, lossless earplug. So basically like uh, uh, a noise canceling set of in-ears right there. Gotta try them out, man. You know, I'm an avid user of AirPods. I love the Apple AirPods. Uh, I think it's probably one of the best uh, products for since the past like five years or something. But I'm open to try out some other shit as well. So. I'm gonna do that right now. Look at that. Boom, bam, bim, bilam. For oh my God's sake, it's on, come on, for oh my God. Everybody to the limit, everybody to the limit. How do I turn them on? All right, let's go. There we go. How do I charge these? Or is it just, oh shit, is it, what? Oh shit, is it? Okay, I thought these would be powered, but I don't think they are. Hey, 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 how are you doing today? Hey, 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 bye. Hey. Okay, so it's basically just earplugs with a small little lever on it. So you can set how much they remove, basically. I thought it would be something electrical. I even said it was like an AirPod, but it's not like an AirPod. These are non-battery ones. It's not an earphone, it's just an earplug. So, I, okay, okay, I got the, I understand now. I got a deck of cards from who? What is this from? It's a deck of cards from PSP Audioware. Do you remember these? You know, the vintage warmer, look at this. It's basically playing cards with all their, uh, you know, st channel strips and preamps and shit on it. Tattoo bomb, so I can uh, put some shit on my arms, I guess. Fellowship brand right there. Uh, tattoo bomb. Daily care and healing purposes. So after you uh, tattooed yourself, you use this to, uh, you know, uh, put some lotion on its skin. Okay, and from them I also got some beard, uh, beard, beard balm I think, and some, some uh, you know, nice smelling, nice. What is it? Forbidden fruit. Ooh, beard oil. Ooh, ooh, ooh. that smelled like something that would uh, surely attract the ladies. All right, so that's very cool. That was from uh, the Fellowship brand. Coffee, man. I got some Sweet Leaf Coffee Roasters from Slapshot Blend. I think, is this the brand that uh, Sack Wild is with? Huh? That smells great. Slapshot Blend uh, right there. I think this is like a fancy pants uh, <laughs> coffee right there. All right, we have two things left. Let's check this out. Kern on Ridge. Oh shit, look at this. So uh, this is a Pell brand that uh, had a booth right next to us. It's some sort of a, I don't remember what it was, if it was like a preamp or an overdrive, but they had something here called Mood, which changes the uh, the character of the overdrive in the pedal. So I'm actually looking forward to trying that out. That's a, that's a very white pedal right there. Look at that. So I'm gonna try and do a little test for that. And last but not least, I got these. What are these? Oh, this is from some guy called Pick Twist, and he made a bunch of guitar picks that are twisted. Look at this. The guitar picks are twisted, so if I hold it, 
It's, uh, it's... This topic is twisted. Okay, let me try it out. All right, let's try it out. Dude, that feels so weird. It feels like I forgot how to hold a guitar pick. Give me a real guitar pick, I wanna try. That's so weird. It forces me... Forces me to hold the guitar pick weird. A regular guitar pick I hold like this, right? If I flip it up like this. But with this... Kinda... I, I kinda can't because it's, it's so weird. Kind of forces me to hold the right way, but I, I'm not supposed to play the right way. <laughs> I'm supposed to have my shitty picking technique, you know. Anyways, so the pick twists. Look at that. They look like this, and uh, I have to get used to those if I'm gonna try them out. So yeah, a bunch of shit from Nam that people gave to me. Thank you so much for giving me shit. I also got a bunch of CDs and T-shirts as well. Thank you so much for those. Okay, back to Ola in the catch. Okay, let's... Uh. So, a lot of stuff from Nam, obviously. Also, I got a fair bit of uh, t-shirts and CDs and stuff like that. Thank you so much for, for, uh, for everything you guys give me. And uh, obviously, I'm gonna make tests of some of these stuff on my YouTube channel. So, yes! All right, so I'm back from Nam finally after a long, long flight. And uh, first day at the office after Nam, and I came back to this. Since me and Luis uh, went to LA, they started packing here at the office. So look at this. I guess these are all like guitarist editions and... I don't know what this is, but it's 40 of something. And it looks like a guitarist edition. And I think these uh, with the vinyls are ultimate editions that we're shipping out of the new Chug project. Look at that. So I think it says sizes right there. So you have a t-shirt in 3XL. You have CD, vinyl, tab book, guitar picks. Uh, what else? Signed picture and all that. So, and I think over here, these are just more t-shirts for uh, the upcoming orders as well. So we're finally starting to ship these out to people. And I think what, what they said so today, it's... Uh, oh shit, Siri, stop, 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 stop. Replace your shit. Stop, stop. Replace. God damn it. There's no alarm ringing. Here. No shit. Okay. I, sometimes, you know, Siri is just living her own life. You know, she's becoming sentient. Anyways, we start shipping out all of these now. Is it next week that is the release? I think the release is next Sunday. So next Sunday, it will be out on all the digital platforms. But at that point, we already shipped out you know, all the order. So really excited about that. Yeah, there's still a chance to get yours. Go to oldenglandshop.com and get yours, okay? Oi. I want to have tuned. Good. Oh. Okay, Okay. Mm. All right, guys, that's it for Sunday with Ola for this week. I really hope you enjoyed it, even though it was jet lagged Ola. Old grumpy guy Ola recording a Ola. <laughs> oh, oh shit, Ola recording a Swola. That rhymes. Anyways, next week, April 30th, is the release of the Chug Project. We have started to ship out the orders right now. You will have them soon with you. Next Sunday, it's gonna be available on Spotify and on streaming platforms, okay? So thank you so much for all the support. You can pre-order the album from oldenglandshop.com. Thank you so much for tuning in for today. To everyone in the premiere, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Tomorrow is a live stream on Old England channel number two. We're checking out the Swola uh, contenders for 132. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.